Hello, hello. Good day, Becoming Disciplined. How are you all doing? As usual, before I go and share my goals, wins and losses and future goals, I have to go and share and provide some value or try to provide some value in your life. Uh, this value moment is stolen from uh, my man, my man, Alex Hormuzi. And uh, he actually stole it from Charlie Munger or Unger. I can't, I can't remember the proper way to pronounce the gentleman's name, but he's the uh, role dog of Warren Buffett. So uh, it is a process called inversion thinking. And I began to think about inversion thinking when I was talking about deconstruction yesterday. And basically it's uh, a thought process that says, if you didn't want to accomplish something, or if you want to accomplish something, how do you reverse your thinking? Instead of writing like a list of, I need to do all of these things in order to accomplish this goal, think about, okay, if I didn't want to accomplish this goal, how would I live my life? And of course, the focus of this channel is becoming disciplined, uh, becoming dis holistically disciplined. And if I didn't want to become holistically disciplined, what would I do and how would I live my life? So I wrote down 10 things regarding inversion thinking and becoming disciplined. So how do I live an undisciplined life? Uh, I am number one, I am the king of procrastination. So this has helped me out in becoming your world's most undisciplined man. Start tomorrow, whatever you want to do. You start it tomorrow, put it off instead of doing it right then. That's one way to become and have an undisciplined life. Number two, expect overnight change. Uh, I've been guilty of that, you know, lifting weights, and then you start looking in the mirror, waiting for change to occur after you've only been lifting weights for a couple of days. Expecting overnight change after you've lived your life a whole undisciplined for no matter how many years you've been going, now you expect overnight change because you've been working out a couple days or you've been budgeting or you've been whatever you expect overnight change after a life that lacked discipline number three have no standards and i wanted to almost stop and do the whole video about this one because we live in a world that hates standards anything anytime a standard is lifted up our current American society tries to tear it down because uh, standards are offensive to people. If you have a standard of the body, then people are saying, ooh, you're fat shaming. If you have a standard uh, regarding uh, intelligence, then it's, oh, you're making fun of ignorant people. Or, you know, standards are offensive. But the problem is when you have no standard, you can't get better. You can have no improvement because the standards are telling you, hey, what do I need? What do I need to strive for? Number four, allow fear to control you. Um, I know someone that I love very dearly that hasn't been in the gym in three years and is not going to the gym because they're scared they're going to catch the coronavirus. And in my mind, I'm thinking not going to the gym is going to kill you way faster than the corona, than the coronavirus will. And I'm just using that as just one example that I've seen fear. And I'm talking about myself as well. Fear kept me from getting my colonoscopy earlier. Fear kept me from doing many things I need to be doing. Um, Fear can stop you from going to a dental appointment. Fear can, you know, can can stop you from being the best version that you can be. So um, if you want to have an undisciplined life, I'll allow fear to control you. Number five, avoid social interaction. I find, at least for my life, that the more isolated I am from people, the more likely I am to be or lack discipline. Um, you know, when the coronavirus just first started, there was a little bit of me that liked that. 
because I hate to admit it. Oh, this is so shameful to admit. Man, I let all standards just totally slide down the drain. I was not one of those people that improved during the first couple of months of the coronavirus. I, ooh, I struggled. So uh, whenever I'm interacting with people, it fires me up in order to be the best version of myself because I'm reminded about certain social standards and I'm reminded about interaction and I'm also reminded about the duty to help and influence others and that that helps me become a better version of myself. Um, this is a tough one. Allow losers in your inner circle. Whenever you talk to losers, now, I'm, uh, now keep this in mind, uh, according to my faith system, this is not a spiritual channel. This is a, this is a self-help or a, a personal development channel. Um, but according to my faith, uh, I'm supposed to be willing to serve and help all people, which I am. But I'm talking about your inner circle. I'm talking about people you trust. I'm talking about who are you listening to. I'm talking about who do you, who are you close with? Um, I have been guilty where I have allowed people with poor standards into my circle and I listened and talked to them too much and they lowered my goals and they lowered my standards. So, hey, allow losers in your inner circle. Number seven. Now, this is a little different than the standard thing that I spoke about on number three because a standard is the what. This, what I'm about to share, is the why. Have no purpose or direction. Have no purpose or direction. So it's great you have a standard, but what's the purpose of your standard? So let me give you an example. Uh, the standard, because like, like I share with y'all, anyone who's checking in new, I consider myself the world's most undisciplined man. I obviously have a weight problem. You can see that right here, that I have a weight problem. And... Um, the standard that I have, according, you know, and this is according to the CDC, is I'm six foot three and I need to get down to 216 pounds. Um, I am over 100 pounds and that 216 pounds would be almost perfection, but I'm well over 100 pounds. I have more than 100 pounds to lose. So I have a standard there. But OK, purpose and direction what's my purpose why is that important well i have a purpose where i want to be there for my kids that's one purpose i have a, another purpose that i want to be a positive influence on my community and people that i run into i want to be a blessing and this is to be real uh one reason why this video probably won't go viral is because of this right here only the people who are like old friends of mine and who really love me, they can see past this right here and this right here and this right here. But like the sort of common person who's checking in this video, as soon as they see this right here, they ain't watching this video. They ain't watching this video because guess what? Whether we like it or not, our personal appearance, it stops and or can hinder your ability to influence others. So one way to live an undisciplined life is have no purpose or no direction. Why do you do what you do? If you don't know, then you probably won't do it. Number eight is be inconsistent. Uh, there's this guy I listen to and he's a, a spy guy. He's a former spy and he's now in the personal development world. And his main thing is he doesn't even believe in the concept of discipline. He just calls it consistency. You just need to be consistent. Well, I disagree with him because if you can be consistent, it'll lead to discipline. So I think he's missing the boat on that. But I will say this. If you want to live an undisciplined life, be inconsistent. Always be changing what you're going to do and do something new every day and not stick to a routine or a pattern or develop a habit. That, that will lead to you uh, being or lacking discipline. Number nine, have a narrow idea of discipline and prosperity. I'm not going to share. That's going to be a, a value moment for another day. But there are seven dimensions to prosperity. There are seven ways to be rich. And likewise, if there's seven ways to be rich, 
there are seven ways or there are seven facets of life that you can be disciplined in all seven of these ways. And the problem with many of us is um, there are many men who have hard bodies, but then they're not disciplined with their spirituality. And then they end up catching herpes or they end up catching AIDS or they end up getting in some type of health issue uh, or they end up destroying their family because they had a hard body, but they couldn't control their loins. OK, so what I'm trying to say is that if you really want to have a disciplined life, it's got to be in all seven areas. We'll cover those seven areas on another video. Uh, and sometimes many of us, we have a narrow idea of what discipline and prosperity is. Number 10, deprive yourself of sleep. Uh, I can tell you all, since I've been doing these videos, it directly correlates my success and my weight loss directly correlates with how well I've been sleeping. So I haven't lost any weight in the last three days and it's because I haven't been sleeping well. So guess what? When I sleep better, guess what? I bet you the weight, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to get me seven hours tonight. And I bet you when I weigh myself in the morning that I'm going to be able to see the difference because I got myself the proper sleep. So how do you live an undisciplined life? Start tomorrow, expect overnight change, have no standards, allow fear to control you, avoid social interaction, allow losers in your inner circle, have no purpose or direction, be inconsistent, have a narrow idea of discipline and prosperity, and deprive yourself of sleep. So with all that being said, now I'm going to share my wins and losses from yesterday. Uh, I'm going to start with the losses so I can finish with the wins. The losses, I did not do 90 minutes of work on my job at night so I could, you know, catch up and be ready for the next day. I did not stick to my four hour window of intermittent fasting. And uh, let me explain why. When I did the calculation, I wrote down all that I ate. And when I did the calculation at the end of the day, I was almost 700. I was I was wondering, why am I so hungry? And I checked and I had written down everything I ate. I was like 800 calories below the 2500 calories that i'm allowed and i was wondering why my head was hurting a little bit so um i ate 700 calories and it was outside the four hour window but they were really it was actually a, a health a healthy meal that i had learned from uh, y'all sick of me talking about this dude but i learned it from alex hormozy and uh and it was a great it was a great treat so i ate outside the four hour window and i also got only five thousand steps in so those were all my l's here are my wins i had seven focused hours on the job i ate within 2550 calories which i need to in order to lose weight i did my bench press and i also did the overhead press and I did 20 minutes of the sauna. So those were all my wins. The goals for today, eight hours of focused work, 2,550 calories, stay within 2,550 calories, 10,000 steps, one hour of Bible study prep, one hour of becoming disciplined writing, 90 minutes of work, be in bed by 11, develop a strategy to help my kids with some issues that they have developed. So that is all for today. Just remember inversion thinking. How do you live an undisciplined life? How do you not change? Okay, how do you not change? And through that inversion thinking, which kind of came from the deconstruction, because I started thinking about uh, things that my parents did. And all I had to do is do the opposite of my, of my parents sometimes in order to have a good family life. And then it made me start thinking about becoming disciplined. So with that being said, consider inversion thinking. It kind of clarifies the process.